Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody, please calm down. We'll begin the June meeting of the Trousdale County Planning Commission. I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight. And seen such a crowd since the last rock quarry 20 something years ago. Uh, so, uh, but no, we are glad to have you. This is how you should turn out to see your government work. And uh, that, that's the way it's supposed to be. Uh, at this time, I have called the meeting to order. Madam Secretary, would you call the roll? Mary Ann Baker's here. Sarah Murray. Here. John Kerr. Here. Rhonda Keesling. Here. David Nalner. Here. David Thomas. Here. Carol Pruitt. Here. Mark Swaffer. Here. Thomas Harper. Here. Sam Edwards. Here. All present. Okay. We do have a quorum. We have everyone here tonight. Uh, before I go much, much further, I would like to welcome our new representative from GNRC. Keelan is here with us, this lady to my left. I told her she picked a good night to start. Uh, of course, you don't get to pick those type things, but we're very happy to have you. We uh, uh, have worked with GNRC. For those of you who don't know who that is, uh, the county has hired them as an advisory position to the planning commission. They are experts in the areas of planning. And so they, we've had, they've been contracted to work with us for many, many years. And uh, she, she just, this just happens to be her first night as the last lady moved out of state and, and stuff. Okay, moving on. Uh, approval of minutes. Everyone has had a copy of last month's minutes, had time to look at them. Has anybody got any questions or any changes that need to be made? Okay. <laughs> I have a motion by Mr. Nolner to approve, second by Mr. Swaff. No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, I want to make a comment. Oh, okay. Um, just, uh, I would like, since I was the person that made the motion to approve the ordinance that we sent to the county commission on mining activities last week, I'd like to rescind that because I found, um, I, I'm, I just missed, I missed a, a key aspect there. I'd like to get that pulled back for the planning commission to review uh, before uh, the county commission actually takes action on it because they haven't taken action on it yet. So I think I think I have the right to do that. Okay. Uh, be honest with you, I don't I don't know about that, Mr. Mayor. How does that work? Uh, in this particular item, it's just the minutes are just you're saying that they are a correct written documentation of how the last meeting proceeded. Proceeded. If you're wanting to do something later on that, you need to do it later in the agenda. The minutes are just saying this is an accurate record of the last meeting. Okay, so okay. If, uh, in order for this point of uh, business, we would just need to put it on the agenda for later. Yes, because like I said this this item is just to say this is an accurate statement of the last meeting. It's not to redo any business. Okay, Fair and I think we can all agree that the minutes are correct as to how what was reflected from last month's meeting. Am I am I right, Mr. Noller has made a motion. Do I have a second? I'd like to second. Second by Ms. Murray. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, please say no. They do pass unanimously. Uh, let's, uh, I guess the proper procedure would be to add that to the, to the end of the, <clears throat> excuse me, to the end of the agenda and uh, deal with it at that time. Mr. Chairman, wouldn't that just fall under old business at that point? Uh, I don't know. That's fine. I mean, I. Okay. If, if you're going to add it to the agenda, you need to do it now, and it would fall under old business as that was something okay. that's previously discussed, whereas new business is new coming for the commission. Sounds good. And dealt with this before, so now we need to learn how to do this, okay? Uh, next on our agenda uh, is I'm any- I'm sorry, Mr. I'm Mr. Chair, sorry. you need to get a motion to add that to the agenda. Oh, okay. And then if that That's is approved, true. then you need a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion 
to uh, add that to the agenda? Yep, I'll make a motion to add it to the agenda. Okay. Do I have a second? Have a second by Mr. Harper. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, please say no. No. Anyone else? Okay. Let's go back and vote where we can count them. We have a motion on the floor to bring back from last month's agenda, uh, Mr. Swaffer's motion to send th that item to the county commission. All in favor, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four. All opposed, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Motion does fail. Okay. Now, any other changes to the agenda? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Okay. Uh, first, let me give you some information. Item number five, the uh, site plan by Michael Woodard, that's been moved to July. So just mark that off your agenda. And then under the last item where it says site plan by Hunters Point Quarry, change the word site plan to plot plan, P-L-O-T, plot plan. Those are the only changes that the chairman's aware of. Everybody got that? Now, do I have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Motion to approve tonight's agenda. Motion by Ms. Murray. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Uh, any opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Okay, if there's anyone in our audience, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna ask now for anyone in our audience that would like to speak to any item on the agenda. Uh, oh, okay, we've already got a, uh, we've already got 11 signed in. And they're all here to speak about the, the quarry. Is there anyone else that would like to sign in that hasn't already signed this sheet? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, we're not gonna have 20 people stand up and say the same thing. If this can be done uh, with a limited number. My suggestion, the quarry is the last item on the agenda. I don't mind having a few people speak. It's not that I'm trying to limit it to one but neither am I going to have 10, 15 stand up and say the exact same thing. Uh, my suggestion is, is that if you're here to talk about the quarry, and that's fine, it's the last item on the agenda, you may want to go downstairs while we're taking care of the other business on the agenda, pick two, three, four people to speak for you, and then come back, and then when we get to that item, we'll recognize those people. Now, that's my suggestion. If not, I'll just have to pick some off this, and then we'll go with it. Okay? All right, moving on. Item number one. Request by Gene Carmen Estate for the rezoning of 5.01 acres on Highway 25 West from C2 to R1 for subdividing into two residential lots in the seventh civil district. Mr. Carmen. Mr. Carmen, please turn your mic on, state your name so that uh, the, and I know the secretary knows you, but that's the process we'll go by for every one tonight. 
<clears throat> my name is Carol Carm. I'm, uh, I'm here on behalf of my father's estate, Mr. Gene Carm. Go ahead, Mr. Carm. Okay. Uh, as a part of his estate, as you go west toward Gallatin, uh, to where Mr. Jerry Hem lives on the left, about a mile, a mile and a half out, outside of the lights of town, my dad owns a five acre track on the south side of Highway 25. I have a representation here as to what we have in mind and the division of it, pretty much a clear division, just pretty much right down the middle. And if you'll notice on this exhibit, Mr. Jerry Helm joins it to the west, and I call it the Gross House, Jackie Gross's house right there is on the east. And uh, I think a Satterfield boy owns that now, I'm not sure. I haven't met them, but uh, Mr. Helm is here tonight. If you, if you, he signed, signed in to speak, but he, uh, He's here to support our request. My brothers and sisters and I do not want to put or sell that piece of property for a commercial entity. By and large, to not damage two very nice homes, one on one side and one on the other side. So we're asking for an R1 zone. We will put highly restricted homes there is, and I don't know if you can see, I can't even hardly see it. There's a little dashed line on the plat that represents a pretty substantial drainway that comes down through there to the highway. It divides this piece of property into two very logical building sites. And uh, I am speaking with Sam and Sam can clarify or deny what I'm about to say. He said there, there might be a possibility that you might want to go with uh, agricultural zone, but that would only allow you one house. Well, y'all don't need to, me to lecture you on this, but rooftops are what make Trousdale County's tax base. And to deny a rooftop just from a zoning to C2 to agricultural, when it's a very logistical divide on this piece of land. I don't know how many of you know the piece of land. It's a very clear divide. Pretty much right down the middle, there's a big gully. And uh, there's a nice building site on the east side and a nice building site on the west side. We would like to ask this to be rezoned. I hate to see us have to have this property for the next 20 years or 30 years, which would be my estimation of what it will be before there'll be any commercial zone right there. But uh, we would greatly appreciate that. And, if you have any questions for me, please ask. Any questions for Mr. Carmen? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Mr. Helm did sign in to speak to this. Jerry, would you come up? S state your name, please, sir. Jerry Helm. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Jerry. Mr. Carmen came to me and uh, <clears throat> gave me a call. Actually, I was in Florida when he called me and uh, said, you know, what his intentions would like to be. And, and if I had any objection to him, I said, no, that's fine with me, Carol, because I know y'all gonna try to do the right thing the best way you can. So no, that what he's proposed is, is well and good as far as I'm concerned. Of course, Mr. Helms, a neighbor in the area. Any members have any, have a question for Mr. Helms? I'm sorry. Your lot is currently zoned C2, is that correct? I'm sorry. Your your property, what is it zoned? I have no idea. It yeah. says on the map it's C2. It's C2. Correct. See, yes. when my house was built it was probably 1971 or 72. Uh, city limits did not go down there at that particular time. They were back down about where the old co-op is at or where the co-op is at now. Mm -hmm. Then when I sold the property to Mr. Cunningham to build the car dealership down there then they moved the city limits down to the corner of sulfur college and annexed us in down through there so. it's true yeah you know the questions for mr helm mr chairman yes uh mr helm what would uh, having a commercial business right there on that lot would that in impact you in any way oh i'm sure it would uh you know just like anybody else it, it, it would make a difference uh, as far as peace and quiet and things like that. But I understand that zoning and, you know, y'all have a job to do and you gotta do what you gotta do. So, I have my trailers, I'd like to see houses.
Any other questions for Jerry? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we are we have a request from Gene Carmen Estate for the rezoning of this property. Uh, Keelan, have you looked into this? I have, yeah. Um, so there are just a couple of things worth noting. So um, this parcel is located along Highway uh, 25 West, which is considered an arterial road for the Trousdale County Major Thoroughfare Plan. Um, the surrounding properties, as already been mentioned, are all zoned C2 Highway Commercial District. Um, and I would like to make a small change to the notes that you received. Um, this property is within the Hartsville Trousdale Water and Sewer Utility District. The map I had was not accurate. So there is actually access to water and sewer along the frontage of this entire property. Um, there is also no flood uh, hazard area on this land. Um, I've included in your notes a, the description of the C2 Highway Commercial District, which is the current district, as well as the R1 Low Density Residential District. Um, the uses permitted in the R1 are uh, primarily single family, group home, essential services, and accessory uses and structures. It's a low density residential, it's pretty uh, standard. Um, and it does require a 12,000 square foot lot area per unit. This, this parcel is uh, roughly five acres, and so the permitted density within the R1 zoning would allow for 18 single family lots. That doesn't sound like the intention, but that is the permitted density under this zoning. Um, so, and also due to the, even though the surrounding properties are zoned C2, because this property is well above one acre, there is no consideration that it could be considered spot zoning. So it's perfectly acceptable. I think we all remember how some of the, uh, as the city limits and as the state did things, just like on Hilltop, all that, those houses have been there for decades and they got moved to C2 uh, zoning uh, when what then would have been Jerry sold to uh, the Cunninghams where they could build a new car place down there and the city got, a, got grants to put in sewer and water down that way and extended the city limits and Kind of like the hilltop thing, all everything just got changed to C2. And uh, this is kind of one of the first it, times this has been brought to before us that I can remember uh, dealing with this like we had to do before with hilltop. Mr. Carmen, do you have something else? Just a, just a comment. Uh, it is not our intention, but for two homes. And when I say it's not our intention, we will put that in concrete. There will be restrictions that will go down and will restrict this five acre tract in perpetuity in regard to it being, but two homes is all we're looking for. And if, and if y'all do not choose to do this, then I would make the appeal that, that uh, this five acre tract be rezoned to agricultural, which is a great loss to us personally, probably $50,000 loss, but I don't want a commercial entity between this man's house and the next party's house. And uh, there has been a very recent rezone of a five acre track, just one track down in this C2 corridor from, uh, from, our, from C2 to agricultural, which would allow for one home. But I believe it would serve the county so much better if it was R1 because we are going to restrict it. There's not going to be any other thought. That will accompany anything before the county court if this goes forward with a favorable recommendation, okay? And as we know, if it was an agricultural lot, they would be required to have three acres, being about a five acre track. It's five, it's five, acres. It's five acres in the city, so they, oh, okay. they would be stuck with the one on the five acres. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Uh, does any member have any questions for Keelan? All right, same. So as I've mentioned in previous meetings for this trip, uh, the goal is to not lose our commercial property. Um, but I have also mentioned that um, it seems more feasible to draw that line somewhere around Blankenship Auto, um, the repair service. And we have, as Mr. Carmen said, rezoned A1 lot nearby. 
Um, it's the one that's right underneath the uh, cell phone tower. So the request for R1, um, I don't necessarily agree with. I would prefer it to be agriculture um, to match the other lot. The majority of the lots going down that street are the size of agricultural lots. It probably were intended to be agricultural lots. Um, he does make good points. There is a definite divide in the lot. Uh, it would probably take significant money to fix that if uh, he attempted to do more than just the two. Um, so he does have good points that um, two houses would work well there. I just don't personally agree that I want R1 to be mixed in with A1 and C2. I think we should follow suit and do a1, all those lots there, the majority of them are the size of A1 lots. I think they were meant to be A1 lots and they probably were A1 lots before the state came in and did a mass rezoning all the way down through there. Um, so whether it was the county or the state, whoever did that mass rezone that stretched all the way down to Lamb Tech, um, they probably were agricultural lots beforehand or they wouldn't be five acres or more, so. Okay, any questions for Sam? So what the petitioner is asking for is uh, for this body to send this to the county commission as the county commission is the only entity in the county that can rezone property. Uh, he's asking for a favorable recommendation uh, from us to rezone this property to uh, R1 from C2. Discussion. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll add, if he comes forward um, with a legal description and he does put it on paper that he is gonna restrict it, then uh, that would be sufficient for the R1 claim. But back to what I said before, I think we should follow suit. They were sized for agriculture. I think it was intended to be agriculture. And it probably was agriculture beforehand. So, and based on what Mr. Carmen has said tonight, and me knowing Mr. Carmen, he has said he would do this, and I'm sure that he would do this before the next. Uh, this was presented to the county court from this body. Okay, questions, discussion. Do we need to, like, with the only question I have is the restrictions. In the motion, do we need to make that motion to approve it R2 with the restrictions in the D? No, we can't. I think do you that can. Uh, uh, I don't, as Mr. Carmen stood there and told you, he's going right. to do that. And, I agree. And, and so that way, you know, hold his feet to the fire. There's no problem there with that. So, uh, I mean, we can send this to the county court and just send it to the county court. Mm -hmm. We don't have to make a favorable or unfavorable, but. Uh, I think he would like a favorable one, and he would. I think that would uh, be suffi sufficient. My only question is, you know, we had like the towns, the Melrose, you know, that it, if you approve the R two zoning, they could put up to eighteen single family lot homes, correct? Yeah, whatever. Even I don't though know he the number, he, but whatever. Even though he says he wouldn't, but, but he's not asking for R two. Oh wait, I thought that said in my notes. No, he's, saying, want to make sure he's wanting to go to R1, zone. which is our most restricted zone. Well, it says in the staff comments, it says the permitted density within the R1 zoning would allow for 18 single family lots. Is that correct? I don't think you can get that on five acres. But, so but, that, I won't but if we so approve ahead. it to... That R1. number is based on the minimum lot area per dwelling unit. So that's the absolute maximum that would be allowed. We usually estimate about 15% get sacrificed to infrastructure. And that would be if they were to develop this as a full subdivision. So if I did the math today, if they ran a road up the center of it and made it into an actual subdivision, hypothetically, if you subtract the road from it, it could be 15 lots. Um, but you can put in your motion whatever you want in your motion. So if you are making a motion that he puts restriction, you're approving it with restrictions on the property that only allow two homes, then that's your motion. So. 
I think some, whoever wants to make a motion could include that, and I think it would be I just fine. want to point out, too, is my understanding, and I, I'm, I'm not sure if Mr. Carmen ever considered that, but residential use is approved on, in C1 as well, right? In C1? C1. Yeah. Um, we have been informed in the past that C1 will not be, was not intended for this area of the county. It was intended for the square. Hmm. Okay. But you are absolutely correct. Residential is allowed in C1. And if C1 was up that road, then everything commercial or residential would be allowed. Okay, thanks. Can I make a comment? Go ahead. So I just do want to clear up something. So um, we cannot send a requirement that this be zoned with a restriction. Um, we can request of the applicant that they they provide that of their own free will, but it cannot be a condition of the rezoning that's called conditional for, uh, conditional zoning and it's not allowed in Tennessee. Um, so it cannot be a requirement of the rezoning. The, the zoning goes ahead for the permitted uses as they may use them, and we will just have to take him at his at sense. his word that he will include that. Well, we've had that question come up before. We asked somebody that come in to have some property rezone what his intentions were, and he said that he did not have any intentions to make it commercial or sell the property, and then two or three months later would come in and they're building a commercial business right in front of a subdivision. And that's just, I'm sorry, it's made me a little bit leery. I just, and it if should. it's an allowable use, I just want to be really, right. careful, it, you know, really careful what you, I mean, if you do it R1, mm -hmm. you could potentially have you could. several homes in that. If the county court rezoned something, then any allowable use under that zone could go in there. Let's make that perfectly clear. The subdivision would, if they were to ever subdivide it into multiple lots, it would have to come before this board as well. They would have to go through the planning process. Yeah. So you would have another opportunity if that were to ever happen. Yes, sir. But looking at that property, that is anyone who's driven by that that is a pretty deep gully and to be able to to run a, a road up the middle of that as sam said that's going to be awful expensive moving the dirt off the sides to try to fill that in um, that being said i'd like to make a motion that we send this forward with approval okay i have a motion by mr thomas to send this to the plan to the county commission with a favorable approval do i have a second Second by Ms. Keesley. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, please say no. How many no's? One, okay. The uh, motion does pass. All right, next on our agenda is a request by Greg Barton for the rezoning of 5.34 acres on Thoroughbred Lane. Uh, from A1 to R1 to bring the lots compliant into the fourth civil district. Mr. Barton. Greg, please tell them your name. Is that on? Push that button right here. Yeah, yes, sir. Please my, state your name and then. then my name go. is Greg Barton, and uh, I just I had these uh, lots that I own. Uh, looked at pretty thoroughly because I was going to sell one of the lots, but it wasn't uh, properly uh, split up to sell. And in the process of this, we found out that there was some irregularities with the zoning and uh, we're trying to clean all that up. Okay. So you're asking for a rezoning of 5.34 acres on thoroughbred lane where you live yes, sir. Uh, in order to clear up some what should have been some zoning issues. They're all wrong in there, but I don't mind to be right. <laughs> okay. I, I just, I, did I state that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions for Mr. Barton from the commission members? Okay. Keelan? Um, so like you said, this is a request um, to zone a couple of properties on Thoroughbred Lane, uh, from A1 agriculture to R1 low density residential. Combined, the properties are about 5.34 acres. 
Um, they are located at the termini of the cul-de-sac on Thoroughbred Lane and combined consist of roughly 115 feet of road frontage. Um, and Thoroughbred Lane is considered a minor street. The surrounding properties are zoned A1 agriculture. Uh, the properties are in the Hartsville Trousdale Water Sewer Utility District. Um, does not appear that there are sewer lines that extend along Thoroughbred Lane. However, there is a six inch water lane or water line that extends to the end of the cul-de-sac and beyond uh, connecting to Bridal Path Lane. Uh, the properties are not in a special flood hazard area. Uh, as before, I've included the A1 Agricultural District uh, description as well as the R1. It's the same zoning that we just discussed. So uses allowed by right are single family group home, essential services um, and accessory uses. The minimum area per dwelling unit is 12,000 square feet and the lot width at the building setback is 100 square feet. I only include that because the road frontage there limits this. Um, so taking into account that 12,000 square foot building uh, area requirement parcel 17, which is about 1.08 acres, would be permitted for three single family lots. Uh, parcel 67 would be allowed for uh, four and 64 would at maximum be allowed to have 11. But again, like I said, the, the road frontage being limited on the end of a cul-de-sac would limit those considerably. Um, And they are adjacent to the Hartsville R1 zoning and the adjacent to the rear lot line of parcel 64. And as we know, the builder has severe deed restrictions on houses built in that subdivision and have had since the beginning. Questions for Keila? Same? So as I mentioned before, thoroughbred was obviously intended to be all R1, a third of it is actually zoned R1. And when the county line moved, the zoning didn't move with it. So um, this is just cleaning up. And if you remember, we just cleaned up three lots for Mr. Beasley um, to go to R1. This is just continuing cleaning up that subdivision. Any questions for Sam? Okay. Discussion? Sam, do we know how many other uh, lots are in there that are A1 that should be R1? I can't answer off the top of my head, but there's probably another 12 that should be R1. And I've requested that Mr. Beasley go speak to them and inform them and ask them to come forward and rezone them. Um, it would be nice if we can do it all in one swath. Um, and get the, get the situation fixed, but they all do need to be R1. Other questions? Or discussion? Yes, sir. Make a motion to approve his request. Have a motion by Mr. Noller to approve Mr. Barton's request to send this to the county commission with a favorable rezoning recommendation do I have a second? Second by Mary Ann. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say no. Does pass unanimously. Sheriff, good to see you over there, buddy. Well, I was, my request is, you think you can coax a little more air out of that thing behind you? <laughs> I just noticed you sitting over there and you're, you're the miracle worker that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to see you, Chair. That's my point. All right, next item on our agenda is final plat approval for Stonehill subdivision by Arthur Harper and Craig Moreland of 7.15 acres. This is off McMurray Boulevard East for 21 lots in the 9th Civil District. We know this is out close to... Uh, where the uh, new Dollar General is being built out that way. I can never remember the subdivision you live in. I can't remember the name. What is it? Hickory out, a neighbor to the Hickory Ridge subdivision. Uh, Jim? Okay, I'm Jim Carmen with Carmen Surveying, representing Mr. 
Harper and Mr. Moreland on this project. Does anybody need a big copy? I don't, don't know what you received in your packets, but a big, I've got big copies here if you would like to look at a bigger, bigger sheet. Looks like we're okay. Looks like you're okay, okay. This has come before you a few months back and we've had the engineering done and proceeding on to uh, final plat approval. So I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Jim before we move to uh, Keelan? Okay. Keelan? So this property, as we said, is a final plat. So um, this will be the final time that we see this. Um, it is for roughly 21 or for 21 lots on roughly uh, 7.15 acres that are zoned both R3 and C2. Uh, the surrounding properties are zoned for residential use. Um, I've included some uh, just details about the zoning district itself. So the R3 zoning requires a 6,000 square foot um, lot for a single family dwelling and a 9,000 square foot lot for a duplex. Um, and all of the proposed lots that are zoned R3 with the exception of lot A, which is the mailbox commonly held lot, um, are all greater than 9,000 square feet, uh, as well as the minimum lot size for C2 is 10,000 square feet and all of the C2 lots are greater than 10,000 square feet. Um, so I'm, I believe you all have the revised copy, but we did get a, revi a revision of this uh, plat earlier today. So the remaining comments that exist are um, that we've asked that they include the proposed street name. Um, the surveyor has mentioned that the next meeting of the 911 board is in July and the plat will not be reported before then and that the 911 board has requested that they not place a road name on the plat until their approval. Um, the other request is that they note the uses other than residential for lots one and 21, which are the, uh, the lot zone C2. But beyond that, staff has no, no problem with a conditional approval. Of course, we've been working with this project for several months now. Any questions for Keelan from any member of the commission? Sam, you need a minute. Okay. While well, Sam needs a minute to look over what Jim just gave him, is there any uh, comments or discussion from any members of the commission while he takes a moment? As I said, we've been uh, working with this project for, I'd say, at least the last four or five months. Uh, everybody's aware of where we're talking about the location and everything. Okay. Everything looks good. Uh, it's all updated. The mailbox is listed. Um, I don't see any issues. Okay. Favorable recommendation from Sam. Uh, questions or discussion from members of the Planning Commission? If, if not, do I have a motion? Mr. Nollar to approve this plat, final plat. Have a motion by Mr. Nollar to, to have final plat approval for this project. Second by Mr. Harper. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Any opposed, please say no. It does pass unanimously. Okay. Next on our agenda is final plat approval for the James Burns subdivision. Uh, uh, 5.69 acres on McMurray Boulevard East for three lots in the 9th Civil District. Jim, I assume you represent this? Yes, sir. This is, this is also mine. Uh, this is out at the corner of New Hall Town and Highway 25 right there across from Grace Baptist Church where Stanley Holder had the, uh, all the rock scraped down flat. This is that area right there. Um, Mr. Burns is looking to divide it into three commercial lots. Nothing is uh, planned or thought of at this time. He's looking at this to, to market these lots. So we're not bringing any site plans or anything. We don't have any, couldn't tell you what's going there, but we're looking to divide this into three commercial entities. Okay. Be glad to answer any questions you might have. So this is the flat area 
out there at the corner of Hall Town and 25. I think we all know where this is, don't we? And if we have some commercial property, that's definitely it. Uh, yes. Questions for Jim? Mr. Thomas, you look like you want to ask a question. No, just, oh, oh she, she, I don't blame her. She's too busy fanning. <laughs> All right, no, seeing no questions for Jim. Uh, uh, Keelan? Um, so yes, this property, um, it's roughly 5.69 acres, zone C2 commercial. Um, as we've already discussed today, the minimum lot size for the C2 zoning district is 10,000 square feet, and all of the proposed lots are greater than 10,000 square feet. Um, there was a question, uh, Jim, you can probably answer. Um, so the, this section of the, the section that's being subdivided is listed as a portion of parcel, of parcel, I believe one or 1.04, um, has, has that been subdivided officially, like legally subdivided? Yes. You're, are... re you're referring to the Burns property that sets north of this. Yes. Yes. There has been an actual plat come through the planning body and has been recorded on that section by itself. Okay. in previous days so it is an actual recorded lot that is currently being developed i think it came through a few months ago he's looking at putting uh mini storage units on it we discussed that several months back okay i just wanted to confirm that that was the case um so that sort of eliminates the uh item a under zoning issues um that would no longer be a consideration um some notes from the subdivision regulations so uh from section 4-102.402 which is access from arterial or collector public ways uh this states that the planning commission may require that lots shall not derive access exclusively from an arterial or collector public way where driveway access from such public ways may be necessary for several adjoining lots the planning commission may require that the lots be served by a com combined access drive to limit possible traffic hazards uh, so driveway shall be designed and arranged to avoid requiring vehicles to back onto arterial or collector public ways so this plot does create two to three lots uh, deriving access from McMurray Boulevard East, which is an arterial route. And the Planning Commission um, should consider requiring a combined access drive for these lots to prevent the creation of a traffic hazard from three points of access on the arterial route in the area. Um, that is again mentioned uh, for the same thing out of the section 4-103 public ways. Um, the subdivision of lots, if this were to be subdivided residentially, um, there's a recommendation that there be a, um, a frontage road or a U-shaped road. Um, and like we said, we've recommended that there be a consideration for a shared driveway. Um, as far as the plat, there were two remaining issues. Um, staff asked that they can Firm that the parcel was legally subdivided, which we have done. So that one has been cleared up. And then the final one is to include the location and size of all the existing and proposed uh, sewer facilities. I, I, there were several easements that were included, but we just wanted to know where the lines were themselves. Okay, to address some of that, the, uh, the sewer, we have spoken with Tommy at the uh, water and sewer department. There's sewer on each side of us because of the um, elevation change in that lot versus the other lots. This is going to require, a, uh, each lot will require its own individual pump to pump to the existing manholes that sit outside of this lot. Um, that's something that will have to be um, looked at and designed at the in as a part of the site plan. Um, and you have questions, Sam? Well, I can expand upon that. There is an agreement between Mr. Moreland and um, the applicant to get the sewer across both properties at the same time. You say Mr. Moreland, we're, talking, we're not on that property. He, he's talking about They're, Mr. Harper. He, both of them have approved. to be cut. Both of them have to be cut. And so they, ha they do have agreement in place together um, to cut it all at the same time. So that's, that's how they're gonna get sewer across to these lots is there's an agreement when they 
jointly get their um, their rock saw out there, it's going to cut all the way across all all four properties at that time. So the Harper Moreland property and these three lots, if approved, would all be cut at the same time. Okay. Rock, rock saws are extremely expensive, so they've come to an agreement to share the cost to get the sewer in place. Okay. Was you through, Keelan? Okay. Uh, any questions for Keelan before we move to Sam? Sam? Um, I, I agree with everything Keelan said. Uh, if some of this can be handled at a site plan when something is decided to actually go there. Um, there will probably be entrances for at least number lot two and three on to Highway 25, um, but that does bring up the concern of the shared uh, driveway. If y'all do wish a shared driveway to be in, um, it needs to be added. And y'all need to make that in y'all's motion to, we, we need to do that now if y'all want the shared driveway. Okay. Y'all understand he's saying that if we want a shared driveway for ingress and egress, that would need to come at this time. So think about that, commission members, ask your questions. Yes, sir, Mr. Thomas. So that being said, and since we just approved 21 lots dumping onto that road right beside it, plus we've already approved previously the apartment complex to be put on the next property over, plus Hickory Ridge and expansion. the expansion of Acorn also. With that many lots dumping on there, and I know Mr. Harper's not gonna like this, but I'd like to make a motion that we approve this with the shared driveway um, notation put on it. I think that's reasonable with the, uh, uh, oh, you mean a shared driveway with the Harper property? No, sir, just a, a, a common- Just these three lots. The three. Okay, that's what I thought, but then and, you said, you mentioned Mr. Harper. Yeah, no, 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 that Mr. Harper. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Sorry, Mr. Harper. He doesn't like to share driveways, but in this case, I hope he would make a, a, an exception. Um, Keely, can we, in my motion, can we specific, uh, specify that the shared driveway would then connect to um, old um, new Halltown Road versus 25? Yes, this, can, this is a plat that can be approved conditionally. Then I would like to put that in that motion that that the shared driveway not only be put in, but they they collect connect um, to uh, New Hall Town and twenty five. Uh, I would or just twenty or would, just New Hall Town. I would do just New Hall Town just because of how much other traffic is going to be dumping on there. I think it'll be easier for the commercial businesses to get traffic in and out, and it'll benefit them just as much as anyone around. And of course, we would look at that again under site plan approval if if need be. But since our advisement says let's put it in now, then are we are we saying no entrances from twenty five on this property? Um, this motion, yes. I'm saying our owner would prefer to let T dot weigh in on that, um, if that's a possibility. Well, again, a site plan approval time. Uh, I understand it's site T plan approval time. Yes, T dot obviously T dot would. We would entertain any, since TDOT controls Highway 25 and they see something safer and better, I think we would uh, con consider that at that time. Given that caveat, I don't think we have a problem with the motion as it stands. Am I, did I state that correctly, Mr. Thomas? Yes, sir. I mean, TDOT always oversteps anything we say anyway, so. Okay. But I just wanted to, to if at all possible, to help with traffic flow so that we avoid some issues that uh, complaints of other neighbors and other projects okay. that we go ahead and do that now since it was recommended. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor to approve this with the condition that the uh, uh, shared driveway have ingress and egress from New Hall Town Road. Right, if possible, if it works out. Questions? Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Nall. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, please say no. It, I didn't hear any no, so it, 
does pass unanimously. Okay. As I stated earlier, the next item on the agenda has been pulled and moved to July. So the next item uh, on our agenda is a site plan by Mr. Robert Powers for the East Main Street development of 27,045 square feet on East Main Street for multifamily units in the 9th Civil District. Mr. Powers or Jim, you? Yeah, this is, this is also mine. Uh, okay. Mr. Powers, I don't know if any, how many of you are familiar. I guess you're familiar with, yeah, he came through for a rezone back a few months mm -hmm. back. This is on East Main where the house burnt down uh, back behind Grace Baptist Church and just before you get to the intersection out there at the, the uh, dentist office. And uh, so he's looking at putting a seven unit apartment complex on the lot where the house burnt down. On East Main Street? Yes, sir, on East Main Street. Okay. Questions for Mr. Carmen? Okay, Keila. Uh, so like Mr. Carmen said, this is a, a request for a seven unit apartment development uh, within an R3 zone. Um, uh, Multifamily dwellings are a permitted use within the R3 district um, and the bulk standards for a multifamily dwelling, the minimum lot area is uh, 10,800 square feet and the maximum allowed density is 12 units per acre. Um, the minimum lot area per dwelling unit is 3,600 square feet. So this property has a maximum allowable density of seven units, which is what they are intending. Um, so because this is a multifamily uh, unit project, it will be held to the development standards for a group housing project, which are outlined in section 4.070. Um, the design criteria within that uh, pertain to the location, which this item has been reviewed and does meet the requirements. Uh, density, as we discussed, it does meet the requirements. Design, um, there are a couple of items we would like to know a little bit more uh, to pertaining to design and um, the, the buildings themselves. Uh, public street access, so the, I, the, this item has been reviewed and meets the requirements of the code. Um, and internal drives, utilities, and solid waste um, have all been reviewed and meet the requirements. There are a couple of comments uh, remaining on the, the site plan that we have received a, a revision this afternoon. Um, and those are to please note the proposed building heights, um, to please include the dimensions of the parking spaces, to include the building dimensions, to note the proposed ground coverage and floor area of each building, include the proposed means of surface drainage. Um, do you have any idea if there will be any signs on the development for this development? Nothing is currently proposed. Okay, then in that case, we can strike uh, comment F. Um, we've also asked that they please label all commonly held open space or note the entity that will be responsible for maintenance of the common areas. Um, show pedestrian access from the parking areas to the buildings, uh, include the details of the dumpster screening, and then uh, we have also asked that they show the connection between the driveway and the public street, so that would be the pavement to pavement. Okay, so I think what Keelan's asking is that if someone makes a motion to include those items need to be uh, submitted before uh, it can be approved. Okay, just, just as a note, I don't have any issues with what she said. We can take care of all that. We'd like to go ahead and get approval if possible, subject to that, and we will get that done to Sam before any permits are pulled. Any questions for Keelan? Okay. Sam? Um, I have nothing further to add. Um, Ms. Keelan covered everything very thoroughly. Okay. Uh, I would like to ask everybody, especially those out in the hallway, to please uh, not talk so loud so that everybody can make sure they can hear in here. Uh, okay, any questions for Sam? Okay. Uh, commissioners, any discussion? Questions? If not, I would entertain a motion.
I'd like to make a motion to approve um, contingent on the required information being taken care of. Have a motion to approve contingent upon the items that Keelan uh, has made Jim aware of being uh, done. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Keesley. All in favor, please say aye. Any opposed, please say no. It does approve, is approved. All right, next on our agenda is a sketch plat by Fleming Homes LLC for Freedom Farm Subdivision of 16.21 acres on Tempelo Road and Bass Road for six lots. And this is located in the fifth civil district. Is anyone here representing Fleming Homes? No one here for Fleming Homes for this item on the agenda. As you made aware, they're not going to be here. Okay. My suggestion would be that somebody make a motion to skip over this and Fleming Homes can re uh, put their name on the agenda for next month. I'd something. like to make a motion to table this until next month. Have a motion to table. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Thomas. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say no. Does pass. All right, the last item on our agenda is the plot plan by Hunters Point Quarry, LLC, for the LaLance property of 147.55 acres at 1250 Highway 231 South for mining and quarrying activities in the 6th Civil District. Uh, before we move into this, uh, I had asked some of the neighbors to get together and try to pick out some spokespeople. Would those spokespeople please come up and Sign in, please. Sam, would you get for a They got a pen. Just anywhere on, on the back would be fine since there's already names. That way I, I do not need the opportunity to get confused <laughs> if possible. Mr. Chairman, can we can we have a quick before we start addressing all the break? People, can we have a quick uh, no, just a discussion uh, about the about the uh, item on the agenda? I don't see no reason why not. Can we? I can, we can table it. I've got questions that I'd like to ask. Well, I don't. It's hard to have questions when they haven't even presented their. Uh, uh, their thought sheet. Well, it's it's on our agenda. There's no zoning request, re, re request on it, and it's clear it's to not, me. It's not up for rezoning. Okay, it's clear to me that it's not permitted in a, in, a, in a A1 based on what I see. So I don't know if we want. Well, then we'll get into it just like we did on every item. There's no reason to jump a hit and jump the gun. So we'll let, let, it, let 12 people talk and then we'll talk about it. Okay. While they're finishing signing, I advance those representing the quarry company to have a spokesperson also. They do have experts here. So the spokesperson will give the overview of what all they want to do and everything. Should anybody have specific questions, then uh, whoever the person is who's the expert in those particular areas would then answer those questions, okay? 
So we will listen to the spokesperson for the uh, quarry company, and then I will call upon these people to speak. Uh, whether you're with the quarry company or not, uh, please don't just get up and repeat the same thing that someone else has just said. You, need, you should be able to give us pertinent and reasonable information. Okay. Do we have someone here to speak for Hunter's Point Quarry, LLC? Please make sure the mic's on, sir, and state your name. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Joshua Denton with Frost Brown Tide, and I'm here on behalf of the uh, applicant. And I've got with us, I'm going to go ahead and just for the record, give the list of the folks we have who are, who are here with me and able to answer questions. So we have, uh, on behalf of the applicant with Turnkey Processing Solutions, Doug Wright, Will Glusak, James Baxter, and Matt Lamb. Maybe not too fast so our secretary sure. can get these done. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Madam Secretary. I'll give those again. Doug Wright, Will Glusak, James Baxter, and Matt Lamb. And they can handle various engineering questions and okay. operational questions. We also have uh, Matt Mouncey of Kalinas Group. We have Dr. Christopher Teef, who is the president and director of toxicology uh, for Hazardous Substances and Waste Management Research Incorporated, who can handle questions around concerns there. We have Sarah Daniel Meyer, uh, who can deal with questions regarding vibrations and acoustics um, out of Geosonics Incorporated. We have Shane Boring, who is a senior environmental scientist who can address issues regarding any concerns over wetlands, wildlife, uh, threatened or endangered species. And then we have uh, with Kim Lee Horn, our traffic engineer, uh, Ryan Aguayo Padilla, who can answer concerns any or any concerns or questions about the traffic study. So we have, as the chair has indicated, have a plot plan or a site plan application that's been submitted to the county through the regular uh, course and have outlined in that application the site plan requirements or the plot plan requirements and the specific requirements under um, section 4.120 of the uh, of the Trousdale County Zoning Resolution which deals with development standards for mining activities and related services. And we've provided information with an application at Mr. Edwards' request. We provided an alternate site plan that increased, that increased the setback amount to 250 feet from the, the, the requirement under the ordinance is 100 feet. And we had originally in our site plan that set to 200 feet, but at, at Mr. Edwards' request, we were glad to go ahead and modify that. That's fine with the with the applicant to increase that, that setback um, piece. And it made some other uh, adjustments in response to questions and uh, comments that we've received throughout the application process. Um, we've looked at the most recent staff comments, which I believe came out today. And I thought I would just address those briefly uh, for, the, for the commission. Um, under the development standards for mining activity, um, one and two were indicated, those first two comments were indicated already be resolved. The, the comment on side slopes, um, we do believe that in our site plan that's been adjusted over the application process that we are showing the one to three slope and the five foot contours. So I believe those uh, items have been addressed in what's before the commission uh, this evening. Um, there was a question about drainage and all the other uh, prior comments regarding drainage had been removed in today's staff comments. There was still that general catch-all about drainage. And I just point the commission to our modified site plan um, to address comments that shows the three sediment basins and the directional flow, and then a drainage comment that should address that, that staff comment. Um, and then on to the, the th three items on the site plan, uh, comments from staff. One was as to the location of any water and sewer lines. And at this point, 
for purposes of the operations and the, uh, the, the offices and operational offices there. I think the current plan is to use uh, septic and well water for that. Um, on the, the location map issues that were the second item, we do believe the current version of the site plan addresses all of those staff comments around the location piece. And then the third item is as to site layout showing the request to show the loading and unloading spaces. Um, those are shown on the, the amended site plan that we've provided in response to comments. And then there was a request for an entrance detail map. Um, to show the width of the access road and we have provided that as well. So we tendered earlier today binders that contain for the commission, the materials we've submitted over the application cycle, just so you have them for ease of reference. And um, we are glad to answer any questions the commission may have, but we believe we've met the, the letter of the, uh, of the ordinance's requirements with respect to the development standards for the mining facility, so. Okay. Does any commission member have a question for this gentleman or for any of the experts that he has brought with him? Okay, not at this time. You have opportunity to ask later should they come up. Okay, uh, Keelan? So I don't particularly have much more to add beyond the comments that have already been uh, brought up. Um, I will say for the side slope, that is um, it, just an error in trying to get these turned around really quickly. Um, so the side slopes have been addressed and perhaps Sam can uh, give a little bit more information on whether the, the drainage has been addressed and is sufficient, but the uh, drainage plan has been included. Um, I would change though the, under the site plan issues, uh, issue A, since the, it is the applicant's intention to uh, have sewer, or uh, sorry, sewer, the <laughs> septic, thank you, <laughs> septic and uh, water, uh, well water, we would then request that a soils area be shown as well as the location of any water wells. Um, the location map is, um, I believe you're referring to the aerial photography that it's sort of drawn upon. So the location map that we're looking for is more zoomed out within about a mile radius or so. Um, just to, to note those things such as the surrounding uses, developments, and roads. Um, to address the site layout, the access road, I, we I did receive that detail um, at the meeting tonight that has been addressed and it does meet the requirements. Um, and as far as the loading and unloading spaces, there is an area that is marked as loading and unloading. Uh, we would request that more detail be given to the size and location of where um, trucks will be kind of traveling in throughout the lot regularly. Um, so just a little bit more detail on the locations and dimensions of that area. Okay. All right, I wanted to go on to Keelan so all those that are getting ready to speak would have her information as well as this gentleman's information. Uh, we're gonna to go to our audience members. Sir, if you wanna sit down, we'll let them come up and, and uh, have their opportunity. Uh, first is uh, Miss Becky Johnson. It's been a long time since I've seen Becky. Uh, please state your name just so that our secretary can get, when all of you come up, please state your name so that she can get these. My name is Becky Johnson. Two weeks ago on our way to church, we saw a sign that said notice public hearing, home occupant request, meeting date, June 13th at six o'clock. A week later, a handwritten note was added with duct tape to say quarry. As you can see, there are many of us here tonight with concerns as you talk with us, you'll find out that there are many aspects about the, this proposal that are concerning to each of us. My name is Becky Johnson again, and I'm a graduate of Travel County High School. I'm also a mother who homeschools my three children in a house we built, which is located less than 500 yards away from the proposed blasting site. It is evident how important this issue is to me, but I'm not the only one. Blake? He just recently bought property down the street from us. 
They have just laid the foundation and now has to deal with this. John Kelly has his own concerns about how this proposal would affect his berry farm. Justin and his family live a few miles away, but they are concerned about the impact of adding more dump trucks to an already dangerous Highway 231. I've talked to Jamie, who lives in Wilson County, directly across the river from where this quarry will be. Since she lives in Wilson County, she did not receive any notice about this. There are a lot of people this will impact, and it will impact us in a lot of different ways. As you're aware, this commission was established under the authority of Tennessee Code annotated Title 13, Chapter 7. That goes in hand with the stated purpose of the Trousel County Zoning Ordinance. Any reasonable interpretation of these two sections of law would conclude that a rock quarry on this property would not promote health, safety, morals, convenience, order, prosperity, and welfare of the present and future inhabitants of the citizens of this county. It certainly would not enhance the character and stability of the res residents in this area. It would increase traffic hazards. It would, in fact, increase the dangers. This is, the mo this is most certainly not the most appropriate use of this land. Finally, this proposal would not enhance the natural, man-made, and historical amenities of our county. It would grant a property owner who does not live here the ability to allow a company to come in our county, blast the hole in the ground, and then leave. The county zoning ordinance further states that a business that does mining activities be located in a sparsely developed area, which this area in District 6 along 231 is not. This body also is also well aware that mining and quarry activity is not listed in our any of our current zoning classifications, 5.0. 01041 East states, use is prohibited. In the A1 Agriculture Forestry District, all uses except those uses or their accessory uses specifically permitted or permitted upon approval as a special exception by the board are strictly prohibited. I say this all to point out that anyone who has told you this is a done deal is wrong. You have the power tonight. You have the power tonight. You have the power tonight to help us. In a case that originated in Sumner County, Tennessee, Court of Appeals cited a letter from the state planner and the regional director of the Tennessee Department of Econ Economic and Community Development. In the letter, the authors discussed the, the local zoning board's powers. They stated that activities permitted as uses permitted on appeal must be explicitly ex stated in the text of the zoning resolution and that a rock quarry can only be permitted to locate on the site if the parcel is located in a zoning district that permits rock quarries or similar uses. When the big corporation tried to pull one on citizens of Sumner County, the county officials stood up for the people. They stood up for their citizens. Let's Let's try to withhold the applause, please, so that we can get through with this, because let's face it, this is not Sumner County. They stood up for their neighbors. They stood up against the town company that wanted to come in and blow up their land. The Sumner County Board of Zoning Appeals unanimously denied the proposed rock quarry, and the Tennessee Court of Appeals state said it was up to the local board. It has been said that if the county does not grant this a proposal, then the county will be sued. In all honesty, it is likely the county will be sued either way. Does the, our county government should be the voice of the people. It should be fighting for the people that live here instead of fighting against us. The company will tell you that there will be no damage to neighboring properties, but then turn around and offer insurance in case there is damage. If there will, be, if there will not be damage to my property, why do I need insurance? If they can't guarantee there will be no damage, then why do companies like this force residents to sign a confidential structural agreement, structural guarantee agreement in order for me to get protection from this company for my property? 
I would have to allow someone they send over onto my property, into my home, and take photos of everything. All this just so they can have some lawyer say we did not cause this damage and we are not paying for it. Right. Everyone here is concerned about our property values. Everyone here knows that if a quarry comes into your neighborhood, it will negatively affect your property values. Right. Our property assessor told us that this will negatively affect our property values. The company if you want to knows, stay in this meeting, I suggest you hold back on that. If not, please leave. The company knows this will negatively affect our property values. This is why companies like this will offer, again, confidential property value guarantee. This is another feel-good legal document that says the company will buy our home for fair market value if you are unable to sell it for a certain amount. Sounds good, right? except you have to go through a company approved realtor and you have to accept certain offers or this guarantee is null and void. Remember, you also have to keep those guarantees confidential. Why? If there will be no property damage, if this will not affect my property value, why do I need to sign away my privacy, my rights and my life to a company that does not care about us? A company that is well versed in trying to make something undesirable look good. As the old saying goes, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. Also, let's not forget the companies like this know how to play hardball when their cute little PR campaign does not work. I, for one, and the people that are here tonight will not be intimidated by a company that is trying to force an issue on our county. We, we are asking you to stand up with us and for us. People here have so many concerns, property values, structural damage, damage to septic systems, dangerous road, noise pollution, air pollution, concerns for a wildlife refuge, concerns about their water. Thus, companies like this make things sound good. They will tell you what you wanna hear. They will tell you that they have an answer for everything. They can guarantee this and guarantee that. The problem is that they are dealing with the unpredictable. No matter how many studies are done and how many precautions are taken, explosives are unpredictable. And they are unpredictably dangerous. They are dangerous in their very nature. They have to be. A quick Google search will turn up pages and pages of tragic incidents from quarries, quarries that made the exact same guarantees to other local gov governments. Yet, we still have pages after pages of quarry accidents caused by explosions. Just last week, not a quarry, but there was a blasting accident that sent rock and debris flying into homes. A similar account happened in Franklin just last year. Blasting explosions are dangerous and unpredictable. Fly rock has not only damaged property all over the country, country but it has caused many injuries and death. It has injured people on site and on nearby residential sites. Fly rock has been sent flying into nearby highways, struck vehicles, and caused accidents on the road. Fly rock has been documented to cause damage and an injury from 1,000 feet away and even as far as 3,000 feet away. While talking to Mr. Wright, who, has, who was representing the company, I asked him, what if an injury or worse, a fatality happens to nearby neighbors? His response was, I've never heard of any injuries occurring off site, but I assume we would take care of it. My children sleep less than 500 yards away from where this proposed quarry will be setting off explosives to blast for rock. My children currently play in a backyard that is less than 400 yards from this quarry. A fancy PowerPoint presentation and a slick legal document cannot guarantee the safety of my children. The only way to completely guarantee that my children will be safe in their own backyard is for this commission and county legislative body to vote down this proposal. This company cannot take care of it, but you can. This is one of the fastest growing counties in the state. People want to live here. People love this community. They love the area. They are coming here to get away from everything this quarry represents. They are coming here because this place, this is a place where people still care about each other. A place where people still care about their neighbor. At one time, Trussell County was a place where if one of us was hurting, all of us were hurting. This is a place that I love. This is where I grew up, where I went to school, and this is where I want to raise my kids. Please listen to us. 
We know you love this county too. And tonight you have the power to 100% guarantee that a rock quarry will not affect our property values, that it will not make our roads more unsafe, that it will not affect the wildlife refuge or the river, that it will not affect John's farm, that it will not damage Keila's house, and that it will not send fly rock in my backyard and hurt my kids. You can guarantee that tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Mr. Armstrong. My name is Nelson Gregory Armstrong and um, my, my roots in Charleston County run, run deep. The, the Gregory roots come out of, come out of Cato and Pumpkin Branch. Um, the farm that I live on, I have the, the majority of land that, uh, that adjoins the property in question. Um, in fact, the property in question was a part of our, my family heritage farm dating back to the late 1700s, early 1800s. Um, and so I, I, I feel like I have a, a vested interest. Uh, my, my children, my daughters will be the seventh generation of Armstrongs to live on, on this patch of paradise in Trialsdale County. Um, and before I kind of get into a few of my points, if, if, if we could, I would just like those in the audience, if, if you could stay, if you're against this, would you mind standing? Um, just humbly as the, I would just ask our government to remember that you represent us. You represent the people. And I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak, but I, I, want, I want us to be heard tonight. Thank you. Um, I, I, I won't, I, I'll, I'll be respectful. I had a lot of the same points. Ms. Johnson, that I, I will, will, will breeze through those. Uh, the, the two concerns that I'd like to address in addition to the, the things that Ms. Johnson mentioned, number one is environmental concerns. Um, I, I've, I've read the website. I've met with the gentleman um, in, in great detail. Um, it, it doesn't take a genius or an environmental engineer to, to deduct that scraping all the topsoil off of the land and digging a, a hundred foot hole in the ground to ex is going to be positive for the environment. Obviously we need rock, but look at this location. I know, I know every square inch of this area like the back of my hand. If you look where quarry site one is proposed, directly adjacent to that is the wetland where the majority of the waterfowl I mean, it is directly below that bluff. And there's, there's no way you, you may be able to mitigate the environmental concerns and that dangers, but that's, that's a, a, a concern. Um, noise pollution. Uh, if you are familiar with that area, it, it, we have sinkholes. If, I, I, can't, I can't get a pond to hold water for livestock on our property. And, and I, I'm fearful that some of that disruption to the karst topography underground is going to disrupt a lot of those ponds that will drain out into all the agriculture. It, it will be challenging for the farmers with livestock in that area. Um, you know, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but the fact that, the, that this was proposed to, to, to allow industry on agriculturally zoned property is beyond me. I, obviously, that, I believe that needs to be resent. It, it, was, it was evident that there was even among your own government, there was misunderstanding. Uh, you know, again, that I, I will move past that. that I, where I feel like I can add a little bit of insight is the historical and the archeological significance of this property. There is a Native American grave site on Quarry One site plan. This is a woodland period grave. Woodland period grave, that is that ranges from 500 BC to 1100 AD. Not only is there a Native American grave site, but there is also an African American grave site, which dates back to the early, eight, early to mid 1800s, which is in quarry site two. And, and that is identifiable with small field stones and, and stones that are, are sticking out of the ground. 
this needs to be addressed to, to proceed further without further investigation with the archaeological and historical significance, I, be, would, I believe would be irresponsible. Again, thank you for your time tonight. And I, I just want to encourage the government to, to, to listen to the people that, uh, that are in that district that, uh, and that are neighboring uh, this proposed site. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Ms. Wright. Good evening. Good evening. Michelle Wright. We just purchased some land here in the area. We're actually running away from some of what has happened in Franklin and trying to establish a place here. So I share the concerns of these individuals, but I'm also an engineer. I'm a site selection consultant. I do economic development consulting for entities that are looking to grow and expand. And so I'm trying to bring a balanced concept to you tonight. The first thing I wanna acknowledge is the fact that you all have the responsibility of growth and we appreciate what you're doing to help us grow. Industry is important to try to find the balance and understand where industry should locate. That's part of site selection and due diligence. Um, as a site selection consultant, I've talked with lots of organizations which are in your situation trying to make a very hard decision. You're trying to balance revenue streams. You're trying to balance what's going to happen with the sense of community here and what you want to be now, what you want to be when you grow up as a, as a county. Industry is a big part of that. It creates revenue stream. The one thing I'll say about this operation is that it is temporary. You look at direct and indirect economic development impacts. I'm, I'm sure all of you are aware of what that means. For those of you that don't, it means that when you're looking at bringing industry in, maybe more industry will follow and you'll have more economic impact that comes from it, from land that's been appropriately zoned and evaluated to have an impact on your community in a positive manner. As a site selection consultant, I've been trusted by the governor's office as it relates to the Memphis Regional Megasite to try to credential here in the fact that I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. You need to look at zoning. You need to look, I've heard about traffic studies. I know that the quarry has come here and um, you've talked with a reputable company, Kimberly Horn, which I'm very familiar with in the industry. They've done a traffic study as it relates to Highway 231. That's great. The problem is it's more than that. It's about short-term and long-term impacts. You can mitigate a lot of things, but once you make this decision, you can't undo it. You cannot fill the void that the whole will create. You need to understand regionalism as it relates to economic development. You need to think about your partnering counties. How does it impact them? I've heard from people here tonight that I wasn't even aware of that are coming to try to create a homestead and grow something here. It'll be a second home for us here. There's a lot of money coming into Nashville, coming into surrounding areas. People are gonna be looking for land along the water. That's what we're doing. And so you're gonna stop that. So whether you want high-end residential, you want people that are gonna build big houses, whether you want communities, be a sleeper community where people are gonna come live, work, play, Maybe they commute to, to, to Nashville. A due diligence period, I think, is very important. If you want a quarry, then do some due diligence. Maybe you've done some and we aren't aware of all of it. But understand the criteria. Look at proximity to infrastructure and roadways, bridges. We talked a little bit about bridges, but the Highway 231 bridge is an important bridge. My company does a lot of research on bridges and infrastructure aging. I don't know the details of that bridge. I hope you do. Water and sewer lines, we talked a lot about that. Residential, 303D streams. I've heard the, the waterfowl. I've not heard any research done related to 303D streams and waterways. And are there potential waterways that could be impacted if something goes wrong? There's a good plan, right? They've got a plan for how they're gonna protect all of us. But I also consult in envir environmental. And sometimes things don't always go right. So a couple of things I, I respectfully ask is that you continue the due diligence that you've been doing and understand proper zoning, consult with individuals, entities that can help you make those decisions. 
and then look at how that criteria meets up against this area that you have selected. I personally don't believe, even though I have a bias, we know I have a bias here, but from a site selection consultant perspective, I would not put a quarry right there because of all of the things that we've talked about. I appreciate your time and appreciate everybody coming to show up tonight. Thank you. John. Hello, my name is John Kelly and I've uh, got the berry farm down there by the bridge and we, we planted the first blueberry plants in 1980 and it took us a long time to get it going and now it's going pretty good and a lot of people come out just to be out in nature and just to pick and do their own little thing. They come from Nashville and Mount Julia and Gallatin and Lebanon and Murfreesboro and they just they really like it out here. And I was just thinking, man, it'd be, and the, the lime dust, I thought about that because the lime affects blueberry plants. They got to have an acidic soil. So that might be a, something that might, after it gets going, if there's a lot of lime dust comes over that might be negative on our blueberry plants. So that's about all I got. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, John. Mr. Phillips. Hey, good evening, my name is Paul Phillips. So I work for a reputable foundation repair company uh, who is part of a network of over 150 dealers nationwide. Our specific footprint is from Alabama all the way up to uh, Indiana. Um, my focus is in the Nashville area, and that's primarily where I work out of. Um, there's only a handful of contributing factors that would prompt a homeowner to call a company uh, such as the one I work for. Um, in addition to this kind of being uh, what I do professionally, I'm also a neighbor. I live... Uh, approximately one mile the way the crow fly, uh, flies from uh, the propo proposed quarry site. So foundation settlement occurs uh, with shifting soil, all right? It's really that simple. Uh, it can be caused by water, hydrostatic pressure, and also uh, seismic activity. Any type of shift in that soil will cause damage and foundation settlement. But when bombs are intentionally being set off over and over again, it's common sense that this would have a profound impact on the soil surrounding the homes that are neighboring uh, this proposed site. My company has repaired homes nearby quarries and these homes have had significant foundation settlement where the obvious cause would be the nearby blasting. When my company gets called, it, 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 it results in costly repairs. Um, these repairs range dependent on circumstances, but it is common that these repairs will exceed $30,000 uh, directly related to the foundation settlement. Not only is this an expensive repair, but it is highly invasive to landscaping, hardscaping, and at times utilities such as gas, electric, water, sewer, etc. And what that drills down to is not only does the homeowner have to get their foundation fixed, uh, but they also have to contract other contracts to move these obstacles if need be. Uh, foundation settlement as related to quarries, in my professional opinion, directly impact structural integrity of nearby homes. Again, the cost for these repairs are a tremendous burden for our customers and soon this will be a tremendous burden to my neighbors. And that's all I have, thank you. Thanks, sir. Mr. Graves, Mr. Graves, thanks, sir. Uh, your name, sir, I, I, I didn't Kerr. hear it. Kerr, K-E-R-R. -R. Mr. Kerr, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to give me to speak. Um, and uh, 
just let you know, I am from Wilson County. I'm just right over the Nathan J. Harsh Bridge here uh, out of Lebanon. And um, I've been attending several of these planning and uh, zoning commission meetings in Wilson County. Uh, currently, I found out about this Saturday while I was out campaigning. Um, but um, this, um, I've got some issues and concerns I'd look, like to address for this. First, the, nice, the Nathan J. Harsh Bridge. I remember when the, the old bridge was blown up. I've got videos of it going down. And this is a new bridge. Actually, a girl I went to school with, uh, she's uh, currently no longer with us, but she was the engineer and uh, designer on this bridge now. But And uh, so that bridge is not very old. And uh, do have some concerns with the blasting, possibly uh, the travel, of course, heavy trucks. I know it's, it's uh, the bridges and roads, they, they're supposed to have certain capacities and all that, but uh, the blasting stuff is a concern. Uh, we do have a bridge up river from us in uh, Smith County that I know has got some structural damage right now they just found. Also, uh, a lot of you, I guess some of you may, work in Wilson County. Uh, if you'll remember just a few years ago, not many, many years ago, we had the little Spring Creek Bridge closed over here for repair. So if you had to go through that, uh, you know what a nightmare that was. Uh, some more issues and current uh, concerns is with uh, Water Authority. This is the City of Lebanon Water Authority, Wilson County Water. This is where we get our water. And I uh, understand that uh, y'all's water is up river from where this quarry is going to be put in. This quarry is going to be put in up river from where we get our water. This is a concern. Uh, as many of you know, we already got a lot of polluted streams and rivers as it is. Uh, this, this possibly could just add to that. That's a concern. You know, we, uh, I never thought growing up that I'd ever have to buy a bottle of water. We didn't buy water when we was growing up. We got out of the hose pipe and creeks and springs, which we no longer have springs and wells out here on the north side that's fit to drink out of because of the county landfill, which is another issue. Uh, so that being said, uh, that's, that's a big concern uh, in Wilson County. And like I say, I do come in peace from Wilson County to Travis County. It's the first time I've been here, but I like what you're doing. But uh, I think that uh, we're having the same issue in Wilson County as you're having over here. We, have, we got developers coming from outside our areas. Uh, we're looking at right now, we're looking at an area behind Carroll Oakland School. They was proposing 170 homes on 130 acres. We've got it down to 106 right now, but we're not done yet. Uh, they just put a zoning request out just like they did with this rock quarry on y'all. No one has told us about anything. They put a zoning request out last Wednesday. We're having a meeting this Friday on that. I know we don't have anything to do with this, but just to let you know, well, why, why are not people, why, why are not people given uh, ample opportunity to know what's going on before these things are put in? That's why a lot of people don't show up, but there is a good crowd here and I appreciate you coming. Uh, my concerns in Wilson County also have to do with Carroll Oakland School out here. <laughs> I got uh, four grandchildren. Well, I've got four, one on the way, three which attend Carroll Oakland School. That's a two lane state highway. We've tried to get a turning lane out there from the state. They're not gonna budge. Even when we was redoing this bridge out here, we talked to the state about why they had this lane closure on this bridge. How come they couldn't cut that bluff off at the Carroll Oakland School at the head of Old Hunters Point Pike? to make a turning lane. The state's not gonna budge. The state's like everybody else. They ain't got no money. The counties ain't got no money. These developers are coming in on us that have been raised here. I've been here 60 years in Hunter's Point area. And, and I know you can't stand in the way of growth. It's gonna happen, but we got to have the right infrastructure in place and the right planning before this happens. You know, uh, that, that's what I think these people are asking for. And this is also what I'm asking for out of Wilson County. Um, we have a rock quarry on Four Mile Hill. Uh, as far as I know, that rock quarry was in existence before I was born 60 years ago. And I believe that rock quarry will be in existence 60 years after I'm gone. So what's the need in another rock quarry? Uh, so um, 
that's some of my issues and my concerns. I do, I will let you know, up in the commerce community in Wilson County, there was a rock quarry that was in existence years ago. That rock quarry was not supposed to open back up. They were having issues with it, but the, whoever, I don't know, this may not be the same rock quarry, this may not be the same people, I don't know. But they opened that rock quarry back up without permission. They were shut down because of that. And it's still up in there in Wilson County. So we got a rock quarry on Four Mile Hill. We have one in Commerce that's probably going to reopen because these people have the money. But as elected officials and out of officials that are appointed, let's not forget where we come from and who who pays our salary and we 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 got these safety issues that 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 need they're more important than money you know our children and uh this, this lady's children 500 600 feet from a blasting zone um you know i i just that's that's just kind of like what i wanted to say and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak thanks sir Okay, as we move on, we've heard from uh, Ms. Keelan, Sam. Let's see, there was, there was many things mentioned that we can go through, but uh, I have checked on the uh, TDOT uh, concerns for the highway. Uh, the gentleman that does our region, Mr. Allen Hall, he has personally went out there and verified the entrances on um, the, the site. And he said, as long as they are able to obtain the 500 visual range um, distance from the entry and exit that they put in, that uh, it is fine with TDOT. They have no concerns for the area. So as you know, um, there's currently no directions in the county zoning ordinance that directs us on the setup of these quarries. There's a few lines. Uh, there's four lines on this, which uh, Miss Keelan mentioned. Um, Ms. A. Miss Johnson. Yeah, Miss Johnson mentioned the location of such an activity shall be in an area sparsely developed during the length of time the mining and quarrying activity is anticipated. The purpose site shall be su subject to the following conditions. Number one, the operation shall be conducted so as not to create a nuisance or cause undue noise, vibration, dust, odor, or um, condescent to the adjacent properties. The premises shall be kept in a neat and clean condition at all times. No loose paper or debris shall be allowed on the site except on areas where act active filling operations are taking place. Number two, no excavation or filling shall be made within 100 feet of any boundary on the site. Number three, the side slopes of excavation and fills in earth, sand, or gravel shall not exceed one foot vertical to three feet horizontal and shall be blended into undisturbed existing surfaces. Uh, number four, provisions shall be made for the disposal of surface water falling on or crossing the site all, at all times during and after completion of the operations. The operation shall not obstruct the normal flow of any public drain or abrogate the rights of any other party to a stream or a drain. And that is the end of the development standards for mining activities and related services that we have to direct us on this property. Um, as you'll know, for the past three months, we've been working on an ordinance to put restrictions in here and add restrictions um, because there is no restrictions on these things. There is no designation for zoning. There is no designation um, stating that it is a, um, a special exception requirement. Um, 
there is nowhere that this can be located in our ordinance. Um, with the proposal that we had worked on last three months, uh, we made all those standards. Uh, we sent it to the county commission to be looked at. It has not yet made it to the county commission to be looked at. And because this application has already come forward, they're not required to follow y'all the recommendation that y'all sent forward. But the plan that they have presented matches exactly y'all's recommendations that y'all put in for the ordinance to that y'all recommended to be passed. Um, they have met all the conditions that y'all proposed in y'all's ordinance. Um, the only thing that has changed with a site, uh, other than they met y'all setbacks, uh, they have, if you look at the site plan that was given to you, the location of the driveway entrance uh, that is currently there will no longer be used. Um, the driveway entrance that is being proposed is further up the street um, in a straighter area, um, which is more preferable to TDOT. They need to get that 500 feet of visual range at the driveway entrance. Um, this is a better location for that road. And uh, Mr. Allen Hall says that he has no, no concerns with this area um, for that entrance as long as they can get that visual range. Um, the uh, Keelan spoke on uh, her portion. The, uh, there are catch basins on this property um, and drainage ways that will um, direct the water uh, to specified catch basins depending on the topography of the property. So the water concern has been dealt with. Um, the vegetation barrier, as y'all remember, we had in there, um, there is a 250 foot setback that uh, we requested to be on the property with a vegetation barrier to prevent uh, noise, dust, um, any kind of ex uh, any kind of material leaving the property. So this property will need to be maintained with that 250 foot barrier uh, from any other property that surrounds it. Um, They have met. They have met that condition, and that's what's on the site plan that y'all have been given. Um, let me go through my notes of things that were mentioned. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. While he's going through his notes, I think the main question that um, several people are asking and a couple of the newer members here are um, asking about is this property right now is zoned A1. Mm -hmm. There is nothing for mining or quarrying in our regs allowed in A1. So there's nothing prevented it either. So what is the I guess what is the, the, the legal on this that allows it to be in an A1? Okay. That may be a question that Mr. Beller may need to, as he's the county attorney, uh, may need to talk with us in a minute. Mark, you have a. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me find it. There is a section in A1 that specifically states this. I'm just gonna get through all my papers. Sure. If you have a question, Mark, while he's finding the A1. Yeah, I mean, I would just wanna comment um, on, just to follow up on what um, um, what was said earlier is in the A1, I think it's pretty simple to me from the way I interpret the, the regulations. Um, it, it's on. It's on. Oh, here we go. You just just got to close. get closer. I got, Don't... I got too many manuals here. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So again, just uh, recapping that. I mean, it's pretty clear to me when I look at the uh, the zoning ordinances um, of A1, it's not a permitted use. It's not a special exception. Um, I think you have to go from the planning commission perspective. You have to fall back to it's strictly prohibited in, in section E 
um, whether it's in another zone or not, it doesn't matter because the property is zoned A1 and there's also one, uh, one of the plots, uh, R1, according to what I see on um, the web, state website. That may not be true, I'm not sure, Sam. You looked at that, the, one, of these, one of these tracks is R1. Track, um, I think it's 5102, I can't be sure now. I had it wrote down somewhere, but I lost it. Um, but anyway, I think it's our duty, you know, as a planning commission, I think it's well, well said from the public. Um, and I've been in this same situation in the past, five or six years ago. Um, so I understand exactly what the, what the public outcry is. And I can totally understand that, but it's clear to me looking at our ordinances as they are, even though it's not permitted anywhere, A1 clearly tells you it's, it's not a permitted use. And, and if it's not a permitted use, it's strictly prohibited. And we also know that according to state law, you can't just not put something in and say you can't do it. it we have to make a place for it, which we were doing and have for several months been working upon a new ordinance. Uh, I think we started that in February, if I'm not mistaken. That's and correct. we talked about it for all the months leading up to that. And at this time, the county commission is going through their due process of how to deal with it. Uh, and it hasn't been passed yet. Our duty as a body, as you well know, I'm not preaching, I'm just letting everybody know, we have to deal with things that are brought up according to the regulations right now, not what they might be in the future. And uh, uh, I appreciate all these people coming. This is how your government works. But as all of you members sitting here know, this is about the third or fourth thing that's come into the county where everyone in that neighborhood was against it. And they all, it doesn't matter. You have to follow your zoning guidelines. So, so you are correct, Dave. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have no talking out now. You can please leave. So you are correct, the river? Yep, please exit. Thank you for coming. Go ahead, Sam. So you are correct, the Rivercrest Estates there is all R1 and the one lot to the north is R1 that's right next to that. Uh, so to elaborate on what you brought up on the A1 section, it does state that it's not a permitted use, but all the other zoning state the same thing. So we have- But that's not in question, right? This property is zoned A1 and R1, it's, and it calls out that it's not a permitted use. That brings, I can't speak to any, any other districts at this time. And I, I agree that there is ambiguity in the regulations. I don't think anybody is arguing that point. I'm certainly not. And that's why I think we probably are gonna need some guidance from Mr. Beller. I haven't spoken with him, but I hope that's why he's here tonight. So the question we got is, can we have an outright ban? Because that's what we have right now is an outright ban on something. If we can do that, then that answers the question. But if we can't, then we need to, we have to move forward. Yes, sir. So Mr. Chairman, you have said on the, uh, on the last couple of months when we've had rezonings come through, you have reiterated multiple times that as planning commission, we have no authority to set ordinances for zoning. Whether Only the county commission can set the rules and regulations that this body has to go by. Correct. So we cannot amend, as we see issues, we cannot amend zoning. They, we can only refer to them for them to do that. Correct. So the issue of not having any zoning for this or other entities that we've discussed in the last couple of months, we can't do anything about it. We're just having to deal with what we're being given by the commission, correct? It's just like any law. You have to go by the law that's, in, that's written now. You can't go by a law that may be passed. We don't know what the final uh, document or final rules would look like that the county court may or may not pass because they may amend them, they may 
change them. That's their prerogative. It's their duty to come up with the regulations that then we are required to follow. Not whether we want to or not, we are required to follow them because they set them. Just like the county is the only, I mean, the county commission is the only entity that can rezone property. And as y'all know, I've been discussing that for several months with some of these groups that have come in here that they're at the wrong meeting. They should have been at the rezoning meeting when that happened. Once it gets rezoned, then anything that falls within the parameters of our rules and regulations, we don't have any say in. We're required to follow the rules, whether we like them or not. And it's also my understanding that looking back at the timeline on the changes that have occurred, that at one time, Trousdale County did have regulations in place for mining and quarries, but that the commission, the only ones who have the authority to do so, removed those. That was 12 years ago. And uh, they were removed by an 11 to nine vote. I was on the commission at that time. I'm glad to say I was one of the nine that tried to keep them going but it got removed and it's never, you know, that's why we were working on it now to try to get them put back in. And we still need to try to get them put back in. And the commission, as I stated, are going through their due process uh, as to get that done. So I guess it, it, my original question was this being on an A1, we have been put in a position by the county commission to have no choice but to look at this as a properly zoned plat, correct? No, no. Uh, I disagree. I don't know because as I said, I think our legal person is gonna have to, I'm not a legal authority, I'm just an old school teacher that's retired. I don't, I don't know law. If I did, I'd have made a whole lot more money instead of school teaching. Because a lot of the people here I had in school. But uh, I'm assuming that's why Mr. Beller's here. Well, then don't we need to clarify that and get that set in stone before we consider anything further in this site plan? I think that would be uh, uh, permissible. How do we go about that, Mayor? You want further clarification on the, the central question you're asking is since this, we have no zone for mining to go into. There's an ambiguity there, even though we have regulations saying how we're going to regulate mining. Mining, Since we have no specific zone, what is the effect of that? Correct. That's basically what it is. Does that mean it can go anywhere? Does, what is the effect of not having a specific zone designated? Is that, that's the central question you want to answer, correct? Is that right, Mark? Is that what... Okay. That is what I want answered also. Okay. I wanted to make sure that covered Mark's question also. Yeah, I mean, my, my question goes back to the ordinance itself as being strictly prohibited. But Since they're in two different places, one dealing with the A, with the A1 zone and then one dealing with 4.120, the uh, mining activities and related activities, they, they do seem to, I don't know what they mean. I'm just being honest. So how do how do we uh, how do we proceed, Mayor? Uh, I've been in contact with Mr. Beller for a while now since this came out. I think we are still in the position of doing legal research on this at this time. I don't think Mr. Beller and I don't put words in his mouth, but I don't think where he's in a position to render a legal opinion at this time. So. If that, and I do think this is the central question. I think that you're at a fork in the road and you need to answer this to know which, what you have to look at. So uh, I would strongly recommend you continue this to maybe next month so we can get time to look at this on the legal side. And I've got some concerns there as well and I don't have a firm answer on that. So that would be my recommendation or my suggestion if you wanna look at that. If, you, if you're wanting an answer tonight, I don't know that we have one. Okay, so uh, looks to me like we have a couple of options. We can uh, deal with this tonight 
according to each member's interpretation of, of, of our, the current rules and regulations that we have to go by, or we can table this and, and let, this, let Mr. Beller have more time to uh, look into this and, and get us a, a, a legal opinion. But if it is tabled, then we are required by law to act next month. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. We're required by law then to act next month. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you the facts so that if in, someone wants to make a motion as to something, we need to know what, the, what it is either way. Okay? So is there some discussion? Is there some... Uh, Whatever y'all would like to, there's nothing wrong with the discussion. Mr. Chairman, I, I would ask um, just for clarification on that, because when we were discussing the, um, the property there at Sulphur College and 25, that discussion kind of came up. I, I believe that we discussed that it was a 90 day period. That, so that would give us at least one more month's meeting before we had to make a final. I don't know. Is that right? See you. Okay. Whatever the law says, we will do whatever the law says. Let's just let's just put it that way. If we, I agree. I think it's going to be a good idea that we we do wait to find out the legal um, setting that we have with this situation, since we haven't run into the situation. Um, but I think getting the information and then having to decide on it that night kind of puts everyone in a bind. I don't disagree. Uh, I don't, you know, I know I've worked with all of y'all for years and everybody here wants to do what's right for these people here and for the rest of the people in the county who's not here. There's as much our responsibility as the ones that are here. And I'm not trying to belittle anybody or anything, but I just want to point out that if, if every group that showed up was able to stop what was coming in, we wouldn't have a prison. We wouldn't, and you may not want one, but you, you still have to have these things. You wouldn't have the, uh, some markets. You wouldn't have a lot of things. So I'm not saying that to, to talk down to anybody. I'm just stating a fact. And if you know me, I'm going to state you facts whether you like it or not. Doesn't matter to me, believe me. Okay, what's the will of the commission? You have something? I was just going to make a statement. I think that is a wonderful idea. Um, we've got a ton of information. Um, I've been able to pour through it, um, but it takes a substantial amount of time. Uh, it would be nice to have another month to pour through it again and, and again um, and answer that central question um, because it has no zoning. That's what we've been waiting on is that question to be answered. And it hasn't been answered affirmatively because it has no zoning. Does that mean it can go anywhere? Can we have an outright ban on something? Legally, we, for what I've been told, we cannot ban anything. You have to have a place for it to go. We don't have a place at the moment for this to go. So we need those specific questions answered. And hopefully we can have them by the next meeting. I think that's up to the courts personally. I, I mean, I think we, I, I'm, no one else wants to talk. I say we make a motion. I'll make a motion to reject this and let, let other, other entities deal with it. If it's, on the law, if it's in the lawyers, let them deal with it. Why, why B, BZA had to uh, take on? My feeling on that is we're appointed to do a job. And if we can't do the job, we need to quit. And, and whether they like it or not, we are. We're going to do the job. We are. If they want to hire a lawyer, if they don't get their way, out, hush, be quiet, please. If they don't like the outcome, they can go to Chancery Court just as easy as the company trying to put this in can go to Chancery exactly Court. Exactly right. That's their decision, not ours. Exactly right. And I'm if the court I'm rules by, in their favor, that's great. I'm going by what I understand but with our ordinance. That is, it's not permitted in A1, period. Well, that's, that's, what that's, we're, what that's what we're trying to get. That's what we're trying to, to find out. Nobody's arguing that point. Okay, I made the motion, so. 
To what? To, to reject this. Well, it's uh, not proposal. a proposal. It's not a matter of rejection. It's a motion. Well, it's a plot plan, whatever that means. I've never seen okay. a plot plan. So you're not making a motion to table this. You're making a motion to reject it. Reject it. Okay. Do I have a second? Who got who seconded it? All in favor, say aye. Now let's do it. There. All in favor, raise your hand. One, two, three. Uh, Ms. Pruitt voted yes. Mr. Harper voted yes. Mr. Swaffer voted yes. Any other yeses? Anybody voting no, raise your hand. Mr. Nollar? Okay. Mr. Nollar voted yes. Now, all those voting no, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Motion fails five to four. We're here to do our job. It don't matter whether you like it. We're here to do our job. So, Mr. Chair. Do I have any other motions? I would like to make a motion that we table this so that we can get better legal counsel to make sure that we even can make a decision on a plot that the zoning be correct. Okay. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Keesley. All in favor, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Any opposed, please raise your hand. Two no's. Mark and uh, uh, Ms. Pruitt. Okay, motion passes. Is there anything else to come before the planning commission tonight? No, sir. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? 